Just imagine, your all-time favorite video game franchise releases its first teaser in years. And after having a track record of previously disappointing titles, this actually looks promising. So you check out this teaser, not knowing what to expect, but then it blows your freaking mind. And it turns out to be an atmospheric, immersive masterpiece, true to its franchise. You white knuckle through every day, waiting to hear about a release date. One day, when you log onto your computer, you see something that's devastating. You find out that that one installment that you were so looking forward to, that was going to be the best game in its franchise, not only in its franchise, but in its entire genre, is cancelled. Actually cancelled. And the production company's way of making up for it is to release a pachinko machine. A pachinko machine. You'd be heartbroken, and I guarantee that a lot of fans of the franchise would actually be in tears at some point about this. That's what that's what's going on in my world, because Konami released PT, which was a playable teaser for Silent Hills, after a long time of releasing horrible titles, or I mean, I enjoyed Homecoming, but I'm not going to say that to anybody, so pretend I didn't. But Downpour was a disappointment, you know? Then they come out with PT that looks... that has the same exact immersion that the first couple games had as far as atmosphere. They release PT, then they say it's cancelled, and they fire Kojima, and they don't even let him finish the game when I heard, I read, that the game was almost finished. It was far along in development. <sighs> and then they show a then they show a trailer for what looks to be like a new Silent Hill game with the same old characters, Mary, Maria, James, um, uh, Lessa, old characters from Silent Hill, right? And then at the end of the trailer, they reveal that it's for a pachinko machine. The thing that made Silent Hill so great was that it perfectly mastered the art of blending immersion and discomfort. It had some very beautiful elements to it as far as designs and everything, but they were equally as creepy or as off-putting, and it was a confusing battle, and anybody who's ever played a Silent Hill game knows that, that one of its main focuses is to confuse the player, and that's a lot of the reason why it's one of the best things in horror, because when you leave someone baffled, then you know you've done something right in that genre. By definition, Horror means an intense feeling of fear, shock, or disgust. Just let that sink in a little bit. A more relevant definition says, It's a literary or film genre concerned with arousing feelings of horror. This is important because of the point I'm going to make, so I'm going to say one more definition just to tell you guys, make you guys really beat it to your head what horror is supposed to be. Horror is an attack of extreme nervousness or anxiety. Okay, now that we've properly learned what the definition of horror is, we can now conclude that Silent Hill fits perfectly into this category. There is one particular moment in Silent Hill 2 that always successfully plants anxiety into me, and that is towards the end of Silent Hill 2, you play as James, you play it as him throughout the whole game, but this particular part, you play as him trying to find his wife in a hotel where they used to have their special time, or whatever. You don't know anything about what happened to your wife, but then when you find out what happened to your wife, the music changes, and the hotel changes, and it, when you're playing this and you realize what happened to your wife, it sets in an anxiety feeling because the music becomes a slow, droning moan that pulses like a tired heart trying to keep going. And it raises, it's just the sound. I will probably put it in this video because it's one of my favorite me like parts of the music of Silent Hill 2. I think it's perfectly orchestrated.
Akira Yamaoka is probably one of my favorite ever composers of any OST ever. It, he's a genius. It is very immersive and it's haunting, and but it leaves you breathless enough to, at the very end, realize that you just played a masterpiece and that it had beauty within the sorrow of it. And that's what horror should be about. It shouldn't be about the scares. And that will drive me to my next point. The definition of a jump scare is a tactic used in horror movies to scare people. The jump scare is used by unimaginative filmmakers as a cheap method of frightening the audience, i.e. literally making them jump out of their seats. And then there's another part of this that kind of la I laughed at but I didn't write down. This device is being increasingly employed in modern horror movies along with a lot of gore because the directors have forgotten how to actually scare people. I rest my case. Jump scares are not horror. If something makes you mindlessly jump out of your seat in a startling, surprise type of way, and then immediately follow that jump scare up with a, a giggle, then it's not horror. Five Nights at Freddy's. Don't let me get shot. My boyfriend and I were talking about this the other day and I was just kind of venting to him about my f my uh, feelings towards this whole situation about Konami. This was before I found out about the pachinko machine. He and I were talking about the differences between horror and a jump scare and how they should not be a thing that's hand in hand and the reason why they shouldn't be is because uh, jump scares are usually goofy. Like when you're, when you're in your room and your dad just barges in and you just go, oh! How is that anything related to what the definition of horror is? It's not. It's not related whatsoever and it shouldn't be involved in it. It's two different things. But he and I were talking about this. I keep getting off subject because this is just... So we were talking the other day. He said something interesting. And I don't think I've, I've expected to hear anybody say anything like that. But he said that he thinks that he's slowly starting to believe that horror, real horror, is dead. Let's just pretend for a second that you grew up, maybe you even did grow up on playing The Legend of Zelda from beginning to now, okay? And the they start, they change the genre of the game randomly. Could you just imagine this? if? You know, you play as Link, you start doing some dungeon crawling, you start uh, finding heart pieces, you play puzzles, you do a whole bunch of things, and it's just such a gratifying open world type feeling. I know that some of the games were not open world, but, you know, you can explore and do things in different orders, especially with Link Between Worlds, so... Just imagine, they announce uh, a new Legend of Zelda, and when you play it, it's basically Mortal Kombat. It's just a beat em up with no nothing else in it. It's just a, a combo system. There's no other mechanic. There's no puzzles. There's no. You just choose characters. It's kind of like Smash Brothers. Let's just pretend it's like Smash Brothers. But for the rest of Zelda's existence, that's all it'll be. And then they say, best adventure game ever. While it's just a beat em up. How would you feel? That's essentially the way I feel. Granted, jump scares have always been in horror since the, since the 70s, um, maybe even before that, but now that's all it is. And a perfect example of what horror is now is the movie Unfriended. Now, Unfriended was about a, a handful of uh, teenagers who were Skyping each other. One of their friends dies or has, has killed herself, and then she comes back to haunt them, and she's talking to all of them in Skype and making them share secrets and just kind of making them all turn against each other. There are so many plot holes in that, including when the, when the power goes out, but they still have Wi-Fi to all Skype each other. That's kind of hilarious. That movie was nothing but jump scares. There, there's nothing scary about a Skype monster. 
in my opinion. I mean, there, you can't, there's no immersion in that, there's no atmosphere. It was just randomly jump scares throughout the whole movie, and that's literally all it is. You're staring at a pr computer screen for the whole movie. When my boyfriend said he thought that horror is dead, I didn't want to hear that as someone who grew up on that genre and someone who treasured it for so long because I really cared about that genre, always have. Um, it's my dad's fault, damn it. Even though it was difficult to swallow, I kind of understood where he was coming from. I mean, I feel the same way. I feel like with games coming out like Five Nights at Freddy's who literally hit popularity within a week because of how jump scary it is, that's going to be the downfall of, of my generation of horror. I know what some people are going to say, but Megan Echol, PT was just a trailer, it was just a teaser, it was nothing else, it wasn't anything. No, that's not all that PT was. PT was a promise from Konami to its fans that another Silent Hill installment was going to come and that it was going to be effing epic. And then we get a slot machine instead. And I don't even think we're getting it, I think it's being sold in Japan. <sighs> so, with that being said, I'm truly heartbroken to see the genre that I love that's not just Silent Hill. I'm not saying Silent Hill is the only thing that horror is, because it's not. I mean, Jacob's Ladder was great. That's a good movie. I recommend any Silent Hill fan to see it if they haven't already. There's a whole bunch of things out there that are phenomenal that aren't Silent Hill related. But Silent Hill is the best video game franchise that was horror, because everything else flopped. Everything else sucked. There's no other game out there that immersed the player like Silent Hill did. There's no other game that confused the player with feelings of disgust and feelings of gratification at the same exact time, perfectly marrying these feelings together for each player who played the game. There's there's no other game that has ever done anything like that, and I think Kojima, Kojima was a huge part of that. I've heard other Silent Hill fans say that they give up on the franchise. This is hard for me. I don't want to give up on it. If if Konami if Konami decides to give up on the franchise, I would hope that Kojima somehow reunites with people of Team Silent to make not if not a Silent Hill game to make a predecessor for it. I just want Silent Hill fans to get their fix. It's just heartbreaking to see that the genre of entertainment I grew up on is dying, if not dead already. And Konami isn't going to do anything about it as far as this franchise that I feel like perfectly nailed the genre I'm in love with. Konami's not going to do anything to make us Silent Hill fans believe that this genre still thrives or that this franchise still thrives. With this, I think I'm gonna wrap this up because this has been a long video. I've been recording for 20 something minutes. Someone put a peti- someone made a petition, I don't know who- what his name is, or her name, I don't know who it is, but someone made a petition to help Kojima because I think he officially leaves Konami in December. Someone made a petition to, to raise awareness to Kojima that he should make a predecessor to Silent Hill, and uh, I'm gonna sign that petition, and I think you guys should too. I'm gonna try to find it and link it in the description below. But if ti if Team Silent were to somehow get together just for one last game, like a kiss goodbye to Silent Hill, I feel like I would. I mean, it would be promising. Thank you guys for watching me rant, and uh, you guys can tell me what you thought of this video or what you think of Konami and Kojima's departure and horror and Silent Hill in general in the, in the comments below if you'd like, and I will do my best to read all of them. <laughs> Bye. Hey Raya, what are you doing? I'm just watching Five Nights at Freddy's. It's so boring.
Is that the game where you play for five nights? Well, technically eight, but every night's the same. It doesn't change. Oh, Mariah, don't you know that that's not real horror? Do you want to see something really cool? Oh boy, oh boy, I sure do. Move over, let me show you a thing or two. Wowzer, the imagery, the symbolism, the music. What does this all mean? Nobody knows. <sighs> like that triangle guy? <sighs> Incredible, kinda hot too. How do I turn, how do I go around? How, what? No, no, no. Stupid nurse. Do I have a light? Don't tell me this spider woman is about to give birth to my brother. So these, these, these nurses are nurses, but they're not helping anyone. In fact, they're doing quite the opposite of harming anyone. But why, why are they only, why is, why, why are they, why are they attracted to light though? I mean, I, I would, if I was evil and I was trying to kill people, I would try to do it in the dark. Do the opposite. They like to kill in the light and stay like statues in the dark. These damn camera angles, I don't understand. How is anyone supposed to? Silent Hill's a good game. Why, why, how can anybody play this? How can anybody play this game? I can't see! I can't! My, my, my light is not, I can't read the map in the dark. Really? Really, James? Use your, use your light. Light, lights are for using.